now begin our second lesson in the chapter on heat and the second law of thermodynamics. In our first lesson, we talked about heat or thermal energy and how the amount of thermal energy possessed by an object depended upon its temperature, its mass, and the nature of the substance. We also talked about how, in general, thermal energy flows from a hotter object to a colder object, and we talked a little bit about the mechanism of this transfer of thermal energy. In particular, we talked about conduction, and we gave the example of two metal bricks, one hotter than the other, coming into contact so that thermal energy would be transferred from the hotter object to the colder objects, and essentially this was due to the transfer of vibrations or kinetic energy uh, from the hotter to the colder object. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about the second law of thermodynamics, which states that the disorder of an isolated system increases with time, and hopefully by the end of this lesson we'll have a better idea what that means. We'll begin by pointing out the profound wisdom of the nursery rhyme about Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses, all the king's men could not put Humpty back together again. Now this is an allegory for entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. And we'll use this as a beginning place to explain the concept of entropy. Entropy, a driving force in nature, like many of the other driving forces that we really can't hold in our hands or see easily, like, like gravity and magnetism and heat. Entropy is a very important driving force for determining what happens in the world around us. Entropy is a measure of disorder. And you see in the bottom right what could have happened to our friend Humpty Dumpty, how when he fell down he may have become scrambled, meaning that he will have gone into a much higher state of entropy, entropy being a measure of disorder. Now, I've wondered about Humpty, why the king and his men may have had an interest in Humpty Dumpty. Maybe he was from the house of Fabergé. I'm not quite sure. But let me give you a few more examples of what I will call the reality of entropy. I'm sure you've had the occasion of opening a deck of new cards. And if you open them and spread them out, you will see that the cards are organized very nicely from ace down, from spades and hearts. And then, of course, if you shuffle them a time or two, give me a second. If you shuffle them a time or two, the order of the cards becomes completely randomized very rapidly. And just by stacking the deck aside, it does not spontaneously reorder itself. Similarly, if you have a bottle of perfume, you open the, the stopper. The vapor, the fragrance, gas molecules will quickly diffuse spontaneously from the bottle throughout the room, and they will not return to the bottle. When Rapunzel takes a ride on her horse, Maximus, her hair gets tangled, it will not spontaneously straighten out. If we scramble an egg, the egg will not spontaneously separate back into the yolk and the white. Once your room has become a jumbled mess, it does not spontaneously become organized and neat. And in fact, the tendency is for things to become jumbled and messy and entangled and scrambled and diffused. Once ice cream has melted, it will not spontaneously refreeze. These are all examples that we experience illustrating how there's a tendency in nature for things to become more disordered with time. That that is the natural tendency. Reordering does not occur without an expenditure of energy, of work, of all the king's horses and all the king's men. It takes work to reorder the cards in that deck of cards. It takes work to straighten out Rapunzel's windblown hair. It obviously takes work to straighten out our rooms. And we, of course, have to do this when we know certain people are coming to visit. Mm -hmm. It takes work to make an egg. It takes work for the chicken to produce the egg. And, of course, it would take work to reassemble Humpty Dumpty and to hoist him back up onto that wall. 
Another example, every, every Christmas holidays, my daughter and I like to buy a jigsaw puzzle, and it takes us two or three days to assemble the puzzle. And what we have to worry about all the time, of course, is my two grandchildren coming around and being little agents of entropy in short pants, scrambling up the puzzle. And if you recall in the first lesson, I showed you a little video of three ice cubes melting, and you probably thought Dr. E is really losing it here, but I want you to watch this now and see what your impressions are. Okay, which of those two videos, the top or the bottom, looked ordinary and which was really surprising? And here's another little video I found of two amateur scientists. Let me, let me ask you for your impressions about these. Riding the bicycle backwards. And here we have Dixie Cups. Okay, so surely there's something surprising about these two videos. Now, what I've given you in the past few slides is some examples of the concept of entropy, of how things tend towards disorder naturally and when we see the opposite occurring, when we saw the Dixie cup spontaneously stacking, and when we saw the puddle of water freezing in front of our eyes into three ice cubes, this was out of the ordinary. This was surprising. Our mind tells us that something is not quite right. And of course, tech savvy as you are, you can imagine that that is because those videos were being shown backwards. But let's now move to a scientific explanation to help us understand why it is that heat flows from a hotter to a colder object, that systems tend towards states of higher disorder rather than order, and that any time we see a process that seems to create order, it is surprising or catches our attention, such as the young fellow being able to ride a bike backwards. Maybe he's trained for a long time, but it catches our attention. Here's a way to look at this. If you look at the left, you see two compartments separated by a valve in which we place gas molecules on one side and a vacuum on the other side. What would happen if we open the valve? Our intuition, our common sense tells us that the gas molecules on the left side are going to spontaneously diffuse to the right sides to equalize the number of gas molecules on each side. That's what we would expect. But let's simplify the problem and show that this really has a statistical basis. Let's consider only two gas molecules conveniently painted red and blue so we can keep track of them. If we start with the two gas molecules on the left side and then open the valve, and then if we were to come back and sample the apparatus every so often and check where the gas molecules are located, we might see configurations such as the second one where the blue is on one side, the red on the other, or the third where the blue and red are on, on the right side, or in which the red and blue are on each side but, but switched in location so that the red is on the left and the blue is on the right. And our sampling would also identify cases in which the red and blue are on the left side where they started. But if you look at these four possibilities, only in the top case would the two gas molecules be on the same side that they started. One out of four times, the gas molecules will be on the left, but three out of four times, they will be spread between the two sides. That is, there is a statistical basis for the spreading of the gas molecules between the two sides of this apparatus. 
with only two gas molecules, it's pretty simple. Well, let's go to four gas molecules. Four particles or gas molecules distributed among two chambers. And let me paint these gas molecules blue, red, yellow, and orange so that you can sort of keep track of them. So again, in this thought problem, if we start by having the four gas molecules on the left chamber, open the valve, and then go back and sample the apparatus to see where the gas molecules would be located, we would find 16 possibilities of the distribution of these four gas molecules. We might find the gas molecules in the initial configuration, that is, all four being on the left, but we would find these other 15 possibilities where you would have one, two, or three gas molecules on the left side and one, two, and three on the right side. And in addition, one possibility in which all four gas molecules are on the right side. That is, in only one out of the 16 samplings would you find the initial configuration of the four gas molecules all being on the left. Now the distribution of the gas molecules or particles in these thought experiments is all based on statistics because we are assuming that there is no interaction between the gas molecules and no interaction between the gas molecules and the containers. That is, they're not sticking to each other or to the container in any way, but just randomly migrating back and forth by diffusion. And in our example, 14 out of the 16 configurations would have particles on both sides. That is, that the tendency is for the gas molecules to spread out and exist in both compartments. Now you can continue this type of thought experiment with 5 particles, 10 particles, and, an, and any number of particles. If you start off with 10 particles on the left side, a vacuum on the right, and then allow the distribution of molecules between the two sides, only one out of every 1,024 samplings would have all 10 gas molecules in the initial left compartment. That is, things spread out and they spread out for statistical reasons. Oh, the reality of entropy, the tendency in nature of systems to become more disordered with time. Entropy, S, being a measure of disorder. I've given you a number of examples in this lesson to try to give you some feel for what we mean by entropy. We've talked about the melting of ice at room temperature in which the water molecules go from being arranged in an ordered lattice structure where the molecules are not free to move, melting into a liquid where the water molecules can move around and become very fluid, forming a, a puddle as we saw. We gave examples of the scrambling of eggs and of the shuffling of a deck of cards leading to a state of disorder. We talked about your room and how that lived-in look might come about over time. And we talked about gas molecules, how gas molecules, if placed in a container, will diffuse from a side of being more concentrated to spread out over both sides of a container. This spreading out, this diffusing, this dispersing are all aspects of entropy. Ordered structures crumbling. All of these are tendencies that come about due to the second law. Now we're going to pause for a little quiz. And in this next lesson, we'll talk a little bit more about entropy. And we'll talk about the connection between entropy and the flow of heat. And then talk about more consequences of living with the second law of thermodynamics and entropy.